73% of Americans say that money is the number one stressor in life. Ever since I've started working a full-time job, I've been committed to managing my money well with the goal of building wealth so that money won't be a stressor in my life. Over the last three years, I've done extensive research into how to take advantage of the various tax advantaged accounts, how to invest, and in general, just how to set myself up in the best possible position financially. I've realized that financial self-care is a really important part of building wealth holistically. Today, I'll discuss what financial self-care is, why it's important to practice, and I'll touch on different ways you can start practicing financial self-care yourself. To me, financial self-care is the different actions I take to set myself up well financially. This not only means managing my money well in terms of saving and investing, but it also means having a healthy relationship with money so I don't feel any guilt or shame around spending money because then I wouldn't be enjoying my money. It's also taking certain actions today so that tomorrow or in the future at some point, I can reap the benefits. There are many reasons why you should practice financial self-care and I'll just touch on three solid ones in my opinion. The first one being that you can create a sense of control over your finances. When you practice financial self-care, you're taking an active stance in terms of your finances as compared to a passive stance. I think this is important because many of us have jobs where our income is salaried, and that's my case right now. When you take control of your finances, your standard of living isn't based on what income you have, rather it's based off of the goals and priorities that you have specifically set for yourself. It's no longer having the mindset of, I'm living in this apartment because it's all I can afford. Rather, it's having the mindset of, I am choosing to live in this apartment because I have a specific goal of saving X amount of money by Y age. This way, we're being really intentional with how we spend our money instead of getting our credit card bill at the end of the month and thinking, like, I don't even know what I spent this month. Financial self-care also allows you to reduce stress and anxiety. It's being on top of your numbers coming in, so how much you're making, versus your numbers going out, so how much you're spending. As I mentioned earlier, financial stress is a significant source of anxiety for many people. But when you practice financial self-care, which includes budgeting, saving, investing, managing your debt, then you can greatly reduce any stress associated with money. Financial self-care also includes preparing for the unexpected. So that might include emergencies or economic conditions that that we simply can't foresee. Building an emergency fund and having a well thought out financial plan can help ensure that these situations have a lesser chance of putting us into debt. Now let's talk about the tangible ways that we can practice financial self-care. My first point is around career and income growth. Part of setting yourself up well financially is thinking about how you can continue to increase your income. What are some career milestones you might have for yourself? This might look like promotions, salary increases, maybe having a different set of responsibilities in your role. If you want to climb the ranks of your company, how can you build your skills and qualifications so that you can get a promotion or negotiate a raise. Also, it's very important to know if you're being paid market rate. And if you're not being paid market rate, it might be worth looking into other opportunities where you would be. Big corporate, like Fortune 500 type companies aren't the only types of companies that can pay well. Startups are often looking for top talent as well. And the best time to apply for startups is when they have just raised funding. There are different newsletters that you can sign up for that share detailed information on which startups have just received funding. A company will always pay the bare minimum to an employee to keep them happy. And sometimes the bare minimum by societal standards is still a lot of money. But keep in mind, the value you then bring to the company is some multiplier of what you get paid. Otherwise, the company wouldn't pay you whatever salary they're paying you. You wouldn't be worth it, and it's just not good business practice because it wouldn't be profitable. So if you think you aren't being paid what is fair, and the company isn't willing to meet you halfway, then it may be time to vote with your feet, which means leaving for another company who will. People say the best time to shop around for another job is while you're still happy with your current job because then you're not desperate to leave and you can stay sharp on your interviewing skills. And you can also be aware of what the market is offering for someone of your level and skill set. Keep in mind that if you're not getting a raise every year that is matching the rate of inflation, which in 2023 is like 3.7%, then you're taking a pay cut to continue working at the company that you're at. I feel like that's something that isn't really talked about that much. And I think it's really important to be paid your market value. And my last point on this is being aware of work-life balance. Taking time off is really important in making sure that we don't burn out. And part of work-life balance is also setting boundaries. So taking my time off because that's a form of compensation as well. Also signing off at the end of the day and not touching my computer when I am outside of work hours. If you like this video so far, please go ahead and like and subscribe. 
because that data really helps me in prioritizing what types of videos I should invest more of my time into so that the videos you see from me will be more relevant to you. The next way to practice financial self-care is setting financial goals. Figure out what your financial goals are, and these can be goals that you have in the next year or the next five years or just over the next decade. It might be building an emergency fund or buying something for yourself that you've been eyeing for a while. The main idea here is that having a goal provides a sense of direction. Once you have an idea of what your goals are, figure out which ones are most important to you. As you prioritize your goals, this is where you distinguish between the short-term and long-term goals. And for me, when I think about this, I think about which goals, if met earlier, would set me up better in the long term financially. One framework I loosely use around goal setting is setting SMART goals. I make them specific, so what needs to be accomplished and how do I get there? They also have to be measurable. What are some trackable benchmarks that I can hit so I can make sure that I'm still on track? Obviously, they have to be achievable. Is this a reasonable goal that I can realistically achieve given my situation? I make sure that my goals are relevant. Is this something that would actually make my life better? Or is it something that society tells me that I should have? And finally, I make them time bound. So what is my time horizon? Like when do I want to achieve this goal by? One example I always think about is buying a house. If you want to buy a house, where do you want to buy it? Buying a home in Malibu, California is very different than buying a home in Dallas, Texas, for example. You'll need appropriate planning. When do you want to buy this home by? And can your income afford you this purchase? One tool I love to leverage around goal setting is vision boarding to help keep my goals in focus. Whenever I find myself spending a lot of energy thinking about where I want to be in the future, that could be a year or three years down the line, that's when I know that it's time to create a vision board for this goal. Then I can have a clear idea of what I'm working toward and take actionable steps toward achieving this goal. So consider putting together images on a vision board. It takes literally five Five minutes to start on Pinterest, and this is also something that you can continuously revisit as your goals change and evolve. My last point on goal setting is that it's important to still have flexibility around adapting your goals. Life circumstances might change, and you might find yourself in a position where you have to adapt your goals based off of these changes, and that's completely okay. Your priorities might shift, or something else comes up where you can't prioritize a specific goal at the moment. The next way in which you can practice financial self-care is having regular financial check-ins. If you haven't done this in a while, it might be time to take a hard look at your finances. Your financial situation is the same and it's yours whether you know the details or not, so you might as well know all of the details. This could involve reviewing spending, tracking progress toward goals. You might have to make adjustments as needed, and it also includes looking at your income and keeping track of where you are paying off your debts. This is also a good time to review any recurring charges that you aren't using. If you haven't used your Amazon Prime or that streaming service in the last two months, then it's time to cancel it. And if you do need to sign up again in the future, I promise you it'll probably be very easy to do so. Take a good look at your credit card statement. This might be where you see your recurring charges, but you'll also see where your money is going on a day-to-day -day basis and for your impulse purchases as well. Taking a look at these expenses can help you decide if spending money in these areas are still worth it for you. My next point is to learn from your mistakes. In this journey of saving money and building wealth, I've definitely made a number of mistakes. A couple off the top of my head include certain investing choices I made when I first started investing, both in my retail investing accounts and my retirement accounts, not negotiating certain charges and not opening my Roth IRA earlier, just to name a few. But I'm also really young and I can always make more money and I won't be making the same mistakes going forward. So knowing where you're spending your money and being on top of your finances can help you be aware of what types of financial mistakes you might be making, which you can then learn from. We've talked about what financial self-care is, why you should practice it, and how you can practice it by looking at your career and income growth trajectory, by setting solid financial goals for yourself, by doing regular check-ins, and by learning from your financial mistakes. That's it for this video, but if you like this video, you might also like this video here, where I talk about seven practical money-saving tips that you can implement today.